Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do best time to buy and sell stocks lead code problem. This question has a very real life practical application. That is why it is very famous amongst IT companies as an interview question. Uh, if we see some of the companies where I want to work at who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Bloomberg, Google, Goldman Sachs, Apple, Uber, Snapchat, Yahoo, ByteDance, DoorDash, eBay, Netflix and Reddit. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is the lead code easy problem and you can see that it has been one of the most liked problems on lead code. If we try to understand the problem statement, basically we are given an array called prices where any single uh, value inside this given array indicates the price of that particular stock and that per on that particular day. Now we want to maximize our profit by choosing a single day to buy the stock and choosing a different day to sell the stock sometime in the future. And our aim is to maximize our profit. So if we try to see it with an example, suppose this is the example that we are given where we are given six different prices for a stock and we are told that we need to maximize the profit. So I have drawn it on a graph over here. So it makes things more uh, easy to understand. And we know that at any given position, it shows that what is the price of that particular stock so initially the stock price on first day was price 7 now on the second day the price fell down to price 1 so we are not making any profit we are actually going down and we are losing the money but if we see over here so this day it's 1 and this day the price is 5 so if we see over here between these two days we actually made a profit of four dollars again price fell next day to three dollars and then again price rise to six dollars so over here we lost two dollars over here we again made some gain of three dollars and uh, at the end the price was four so over here again we lost two dollars so the thing is if we just do it like this uh, we don't get the maximized profits why because we are only seeing that what is the difference between e every single day but if we see that if we do something if we buy the stock on this particular day which means that we are buying the stock when the stock price at, is at one and if we sell the price when the stock price is at six so which means if we sell when the stock price is at six we can actually make a profit of five dollars this is the answer we need to return that this is the maximum profit we can make uh, based on these stock prices. So let me show you that what would be the brute force approach and then I'll show you that what would be the optimal approach. So for the brute force approach, one thing we can do is that we take every single position of a buy and sell price for these given stocks, which means that we make every single pair. So first of all, we see that if we buy the stock at price seven and we sell at price one, again, we sell at price five, again, we sell at price three and so on and so forth. What is the maximum profit we are getting? And we will create a variable called profit and we will keep track that what is the maximum number we have found so far. Once we are done with this value number seven, we would ignore this case and then again, and we will repeat the same thing with value number five. So we start buying. Uh, so we start that our buy price is at value number one. And again, we start checking all of the comparisons that what would be the profit. And eventually we would find a pair where buy value is one and sell value is actually six, which means that we would gain profit of five dollars. And then we will return this as our answer. Like this solution would work as expected. We will get the desired result. But the thing is, this is not the most optim optimal approach. Why this is not the most optimal approach? Because if we see uh, the time complexity the time complexity in this case is actually going to be big O of n square why n square because for any single entry we will have to take a look at every single entry in the remaining array and we will iterate this process so that is why it is a very time consuming process and we need to find a way to do something better and uh, let me quickly show you that what would be the optimal solution in this case so for the optimal approach, what we are going to do is we are actually going to see that uh, when do we get the maximized profit? We only get the maximized profit when we buy at the lowest value and we sell at the highest value. So this is the logic we are going to apply over here that uh, we are going to buy the stock at the lowest value and we are going to sell the stock at the highest value. But the thing is, it is not easy, as easy as finding like the maximum value and the minimum value, because in this case, maximum value is actually seven and minimum value is actually one. We don't need to get the difference of these two values because if we do that, we will get an answer of six. But the thing is, uh, we are actually dealing with stocks. So we can only buy stocks uh, in the past 
which means that if we decide to buy a stock over here, we can only sell it afterwards. We can't sell it uh, to a, some value in the before. So that's why that is one thing we need to keep track of that we have to make sure that this linear property of buying and selling is maintained in this case. So what we are going to do is we are going to have a variable called buy and that is going to keep track of what is the minimum uh, value we have stored so far. And we are going to see that at any given moment, whatever the minimum buy value is, if on that particular day we try to sell a stock, what is the profit we are getting? So let me quickly draw three variables over here. So we are going to have three variables called buy, sell and profit. Now, first of all, we are at this position number seven, which means that we are buying the stock at seven and we can't do anything about it because we don't have any way to sell it. Uh, so we will start with the second position. So now on the second day, the stock price fell down to one, which means that if we can, we have already bought this stock at value number seven. If we try to sell it at value number one, it really does not give much progress. But one thing we can do over here is that because today the stock price is actually low we can reduce that whatever the buying price is from 7 to 1 so we will do that so now the buy price is actually 1 and uh, we are not selling anything or we are not doing anything again now the next day the uh, price is uh, price of the stock is 5 so we will try to do that okay what is the 5 minus 1 which is the minimum price we have bought stock so far and 5 minus 1 is actually 4 which is the maximum profit we have made so far and we don't need to update this buy value because we have already bought it at a lower price than whatever the current price of the stock is now we will move on to the next value so next value the stock price is actually 3 which means 3 is still great than value number one which means we don't need to update this value number three but we will have to check that whether we are making any greater profit or not so again we will do three minus whatever this buy value is the buy value is one so three minus one so the pro current profit we make is actually two but i think is two is actually less than four which means we can we don't need to update the profit we have made so far now again we will ignore this case we will move on to the next value so the next value the stock price is actually at six so stock price is now at six and now again we will do six minus one so six minus one uh, selling price would be actually five and because this is five and this profit is actually greater than whatever profit we have achieved so far so the current maximum profit we have made so far is five now again the stock price is at four so again the selling price on this day would be four and we don't need to update the buying price because the buying price is already at one which is lower than four and now we will do four minus one so four minus one if we do we still make profit but this profit is only three dollars and three dollars is actually less than whatever the maximum profit we have made so far now we are at the end of our loop and now we don't have any more values to iterate over inside the given array which means whatever the result we have start, stored inside the maximum profit variable we will just return that and in this case we will return answer as 5 and this answer would work perfectly fine this is like the most desired answer we need if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually big o of n why big o of n because notice that we are own completing everything in a single iteration and uh, in terms of space complexity uh, for the space complexity we are not actually using any additional space apart from storing couple of variables so that's why space is also constant so that's why this is a very good approach we are solving this in big o of n and big o, big o of n time and big o of 1 space complexity. So first of all we are going to initialize a variable called min and we are going to give it the first value of the given price. This uh, We are going to create a variable called profit to note down the maximum profit we can achieve and initially we are going to mark it as 0 and then we will update the value inside our loop. So now we are going to run a for loop across the given array. Now inside the given loop, first of all, we will check that whether we need to update the value of min or not. So we will check that if the current min value is less than whatever the value of i is, then we will update the value of min. And also we will check that whether the current profit we can make by selling the stock on that particular day comparing with the min value, uh, we will choose the maximum profit we can. And once this loop ends, we simply need to return the whatever value we have stored in the profit variable. Let's try to run this code. Okay, seems like our code is working as expected. Let's submit it. And our code is actually pretty efficient. It runs faster than a lot of other solutions. And I would be posting this code in the comments. So you can check it out from there. Thank you.